I'm going to touch on the assumption that leadership is constant. Technology is on its own curve. Every day I deal with some artificial intelligence and where technology crosses leadership is a single point. And on any graph that would look very, very small. But I'm going to expand that point. Welcome everyone to the AI Masterclass conversation here with our panelists and speaker, uh, General Kaufman. General Kaufman, welcome. Thank you. I'm very, very excited to be here. Yeah, we've heard so much about you. Thank you for your service. And uh, most importantly, we we're very curious to learn here, you know, what's encouraged you to come and talk, you know, especially at NYU on AI and, and what's your personal interest. Of course, I know at, at the workplace, you you pretty much have AI everywhere. Yeah. So. They, I don't even think the question was out of Travis's mouth when I said yes. Would you like to speak on AI? Yes, and then he said NYU, which was a double yes. <laughs> it's an incredible city, it's an incredible university, and the subject matter is vital to national security. Every day, I deal with some artificial intelligence instantiation that's going to help the women and men in uniform, hopefully def really deter any adversary from approaching us. But if anyone is stupid enough to fight us, we will be able to defeat them. And we take a very unique approach in the Army. We're not trying to replace the commander. We're trying to replace staff functions and increase decision speed. And we do that every day from our Artificial Intelligence Center up in Pennsylvania to our labs and centers across Army Futures Command. Wow, that's wonderful. And you mentioned uh, decision speed because when there was the Benghazi incident, you know, I was personally involved in when Alexa came out, we were building these skills. And one of the things that people at Quantico wanted you know, when they were training officers there was, how can you make decision making faster? And they said, okay, can you make a bot? Because apparently in Benghazi, one of the challenges that they had was there was debate in taking a decision and what is a definition of something. And, and you have to make the right decision. And it's a hard question sometimes. Have you sort of faced such challenges? Because for me, it's all hearsay. I was never in one of those rooms. I only am just you know, verbalizing here what I heard from people when we were kind of asked by the US Army. And we worked closely with the Army back then to sort of develop this thing called Ask Marshall. Uh, and, and there was like a chat bot or a text bot. And you could ask Marshall, and Marshall would instantly tell you, you know, what's the definition of a machine gun? I'm sure there are more complex questions than that. And how does that work? Yeah. So. We plan entire military operations on a hypothesis of where we think the enemy will be, what we think the enemy's actions are going to be on the battlefield. And then as bits and tidbits of information come in, that further refines your understanding of the enemy situation. And you're supposed to apply that to your course of action that you chose and see if it's still viable. What AI allows you to do is take sensors from the internet, from cameras, from anything out there, and then quickly process that information so that commanders can make decisions based on accurate information, not just hypotheses. Through my 30 plus year career, you've had to go with staff recommendations and your own gut. And luckily, our commanders in the field are really, really good. They have the experience required to make those judgment calls. But if you can get better information, better data, and get that in a timely manner to the commanders on the ground, and they're gonna make better decisions. It's just that simple. Yeah, that's wonderful. I'm sure uh, you know the, the panelists, other panelists, and of course the audience there that's going to be board members and C-suite executives are going to really enjoy learning from your experience. And I'm sure I, I don't want you to share all your goodies today, but I'm sure there'll be a lot more that you'll be sharing with us when you come. Before we part, I just want to get from you maybe your shout out to the community. You know, beyond just the commercial sector, which is obviously attending this class within the government sector. You know, do you think folks should attend a classroom like this, and it, would it be valuable for them? Yeah, I think it would absolutely be valuable. The speakers that you've lined up are incredible people. I just flipped through there. I was a page turner, just seeing who was speaking and the years and years of experience that they possess. What I'm going to touch on is the assumption that leadership is constant, that you have to apply leadership constantly through your organization, whether that's in the Army, at the company level, battalion, division, up at the strategic level where I am. But it's constant. And technology is on its own curve. And where technology crosses leadership is a single point. And on any graph, that would look very, very small. But I'm going to expand that point. And I'm going to talk to leaders, that, and it's applicable in the Army or in the civilian world, that in order to get the most out of AI and your organization, 
you have to do a few things. You have to understand the problem in your organization and what AI can do. You gotta be able to visualize how to apply that. You're gonna have to describe that to your organization and then you have to direct certain people within your team to do certain things by a certain suspense and then you have to assess. So understand, visualize, describe, direct, and assess. It's the leadership that matters because you can spend a whole bunch of money on AI and not get what you want. So that's what I'm gonna to touch on. Oh, that's wonderful. And I'm sure all the board members are gonna love that because that's their hot button, <laughs> spending money on AI. And I know the government obviously spends a lot of money on AI. And for them to understand where not to spend the money is probably more important than where to spend the money. That's right. Well, thank you so much, John Kaufman, for being here and participating in this conversation. We're really excited and looking forward to having you on May 9th and 10th in New York. Yeah, first slice of pies on me. <laughs> thank you. Thanks. Thank you.